Hello, this is Dave Kalstrom with Outbound Excellence and uh, welcome to our series Spotlight on Technology. And today we have with us Bob Bartle, the founder and CEO of Bartle Research and also the inventor of the Bartle Meg Probe, which is a revolutionary non-contact method of testing electrically operated solenoid valves and relays that are 99% faster than a voltmeter. Thank you very much, Dave. It's my pleasure to be here. And it isn't often that we have this opportunity to present uh, our new inventions that, that uh, are revolutionary in any, any field. But I really appreciate it and thank you very much. You're welcome. Bob, introduce us to the Meg Probe and tell us what some of the main advantages are of the Meg Probe over a Volt or an Ohm tester. Thank you, Dave. Well, the main advantages are speed. And if you look at this little relay here, it's an ice cube relay. Now, these are used throughout industry. And the example I have here to give you is with elevators. There may be 50 or 100 of these in one elevator. And when you open the panel to test it, it's just thousands of wires to test, to check. And if you do it with a voltmeter, how, are you going to, how would you find the correct wire behind it? You have to go to a schematic and find out wire number so-and-so on such-and-such -such a relay, which you see all little contacts yeah. behind here. Now you take the voltmeter and you measure the voltage. Now you read a voltage if you get that far. It takes a long time to find it on the schematic and then check it and you take a reading. Even if you took a reading, you don't know if there's current through the coil. Now if you take a voltmeter, a uh, mag probe, you hold it right up to the relay. There's this, can you imagine 50 of these together with all the wires behind? There's a panel right in here. And behind this panel you look and there's all these thousands of wires. Now I want to check this relay and see if it's energized. Now you see that light come on? Right there. That's what it takes. That's how long it takes. Just a second. And once you get the spot on all these little mice cube relays, you know where to go on each one. Now I've checked it in one second. What it normally takes, the voltmeter, and still even if you get a voltage measurement, you're not sure. There's, you don't know if there's current through the coil. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to com completely power off the elevator and pull a relay out and make a resistance check across the coil which is not good because sometimes you can make a, you can detect a, a resistance in it which is correct and then you plug it in with power and it opens, it doesn't work anymore, it, it, it breaks the circuit. But with these ice cube relays, as specifically that illustrates what it can do, so you've eliminated a downtime of an elevator from anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour to make sometimes two hours to find the problem with the old method, with this you do it in one second. So tell us a little bit about it. How does the Meg probe operate in humid conditions? Well, uh, Dave, you ask if it will work on, uh, in uh, humid conditions, but not only, let's assume that's salt water, and this is a extreme humid condition. Now, I drop it in this water, and in our test, uh, initial test, we had four units in a quart jar of water. We dropped the four units in, and we watched them every day until finally one did fail, and the, the first one failed after 30 days immersed in salt water. But it can be fresh water, but in the case of the offshore drilling rigs, they really like it because it doesn't react to salt water or to chemicals. By that, by that a measure, it does not. Now you see this operating on and off underwater. How about as far as the environment goes, how does the MAG probe operate in extreme hot and cold weather conditions? Okay, that, that's a good question because uh, we did get receive a call. I received a call from uh, Alaska, in fact, the North Slope. Of the, of the mountains up to, they said the temperature there was 80 below zero and it operated 80 below zero. And I said, well, the, spec, the specification is at 40 below zero, but I'm glad to hear it works at 80 without, without any problems. But they said not only does it work at 80 below zero, but we have a wind chill factor of minus 125 degrees. Now typically, material has a glass point. When it reaches so, so cold, it shatters and it didn't. So there it was at my but he said we do normally keep it in our pocket and then pull it out and use it, but at minus 80. In our initial test, we put it in a cold chamber, and the cold chamber was 80 below zero. We did that for seven days without any problems, without a failure. Secondly, we then put it in a hot chamber, chamber, which was up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and it worked without any problems. Now typically in testing uh, materials and uh, instruments, if you, uh, they call a thermal shock. So we did a thermal shock, which is the ultimate extreme shock where you, you put it in, say, uh, 10 below zero, and then bring it out and put it in uh, 110 degrees or 100 degrees outside. That's the thermal shock. Now, if anything's going to fail, that will that'll certainly kill it because it, it's a, a tremendous shock to the, the material used inside and outside of it. But it survived the thermal shock test, too, which was very, very uh, satisfying to see that. So 
I expected uh, plus 160, but our, actually our test went up to 180. I didn't want to cook it, you know, and a, <laughs> a bake it, but we wanted to have an extreme te te uh, temperature to make sure we didn't have any de deformation of, of the material, and it didn't. Everything survived perfectly. Sometimes parts become magnetized during manufacturing. At what level of magnetism will the mag probe detect? Well, typically the sensitivity of it is three gauss as it stands here or better. If we use the little uh, magnet that comes with it, we can adjust that down to one gauss, and in cases, many cases less than one gauss. But if it's so sensitive, we, it's, if it picks up the magnetic field uh, of the earth, we don't want that. So we don't sell those, but we do have that happen occasionally. It's rare, but it does happen where we can actually detect north and south poles in the earth. And uh, the clo closest it competitor to us, well, if there was any, but after what it does, but there was, their sensitivity was 300 gauss and ours was three, which is 100 times more sensitive. But then when we put the little adjustment magnet on the tip of it, we got to one gauss, which made us 300 times more sensitive than they are. When we test large solenoids and relays, the magnetic fields may overlap. Can you reduce the sensitivity? Yes, we can. Uh, this came about with uh, a company, I think it was uh, oil companies and a drill, uh, they were doing refinery. But they had in the refinery these very large valves, very huge, and they generate large magnetic fields. Well, they do, do interfere with each other sometimes. They, they overlap. Now, if we tested one, how are we sure we didn't test the one next to it when we picked up the magnetic field? There's two ways you can do that. You can move from one to the other and you see it go out and then on again with the next one. You can do it this way, or in this case, the customer said, look, this detects, this reduces the sensitivity of the mag probe to prevent it from turning on when you're not using it. And it also prevents damage if you drop it because it bounces. So since this will decrease as a magnetic shield, it decreases the magnetic field when you apply it to it. Now we decrease the magnetic field and we don't use it, we're out here. You see that? It becomes out here to down here. There it is. And he said that worked. It eliminated the overlapping magnetic field. And, and that is, that's really essential because you have that lithium battery and you don't want to turn it on when you're not using it. But it it's clear, clears about it in the instructions to not insert it into the tube with the magnet down. You put the red cap here in the tube and it won't turn on. But that's clearly illustrated in the instructions. How can I see the LED if I work outside in bright sunlight? And this came in, in a, uh, a reply to one of our customers that used it in outside uh, activities such as uh, oil companies and uh, chemical companies and plants where they have valves outside of, of the environment inside where it's so uh, shielded from the sun. So what they did, they said, well, the LED is kind of hard to see, so they, did, they wrapped electrician's tape around the red cap and looked down the red cap to see the LED. But we don't have to do that to every one. So I said, what can you do about that? So I said, well, we'll just develop something to shield it from the sun, yet we can see the LED. So we, and every one is equipped with this uh, black tube. And the black tube is very simple. You take it out of the box, slides right over the red cap, put it down the magnetic field, now we can see it. We can look down the tube when we're mm -hmm. shielded from the sun. We can see the LED has no problem. Very nice. That solved that problem. How can I make sure that the mag probe's working before I troubleshoot? Well, not only does this little magnet increase the sensitivity, and also, by the way, it will identify north and south poles when using it, according to instructions. But if you're using it, the main problem technicians have, if the light doesn't turn on, let's say we hold up this test disk and the light doesn't turn on, how do we know this works? Well, we go to the little magnet that comes with each one, and it's in the tip of the tube, and we can self-test it like this, real quick, go back, test that, real. now we know it works. Because anything can all of a sudden fail a battery or destruct, you know, through a physical damage. But with this way, you're sure it works. That is one of the major problems with any test engine. If you don't read a voltage on a voltmeter, do you know the voltmeter works? Well, that's hard to test unless you check a voltage with it. But with this, you can check it every single time if you want to. And since these last for 5,000 five second tests, which is in many cases three to five years, uh, it's definitely worth it. Every, every self test, we self test every one at least five times during manufacturing to ma make sure there's no defects. What powers the mag probe? The mag probe uses a lithium battery. <clears throat> the reason for lithium is its long shelf life of uh, only losing 5% of its capability after 10 years on the shelf. 
but importantly also is an, an alkaline battery discharge at a, a long slope when it cro crosses the discharge time it may come it may uh, become intermittent and sometimes it works but with a lithium when it quits it completes com quits completely now I'm asked well can I replace the battery and I say no because it's been designed to be totally sealed to be intrinsically safe from explosion proof atmosphere explosion atmosphere but uh, it also works in humid climates but when you consider that this will operate for 5,000 five second tests which uh, translates into roughly three to five years and each time you make a test it takes only seconds now we had a, a customer call us from Canada and in the elevator business and he said you're not going to believe this but we had a strike up here and the supervisors had to start testing the elevators but they had a couple of these in a drawer that they hadn't used yet and they thought well we'll just give it a try well they did and they worked extremely well so they called us and they said we put these into service and after evaluating the savings what we had how much profit we made more we found out for every one of these in service we made ten thousand more dollars per year for every one and we have all our technicians have these now and if they last three to five years it takes about two seconds to make a test you're talking uh, talking about uh, ten thousand more profit per year per unit that they place into service have your customers encountered problems with new solenoid valves yes they have and and what happens is when you test a solenoid valve you test the coil and inside of the solenoid valve is a little uh, rod metal rod that moves up and down as it's activated or open or closed the critical part is when they're turned off they should become demagnetized if they're not they can kind of float on on off condition or not be completely off or not completely on now when this happens just for example if you're in a rough air in an airline and you're you have a solenoid valve that's par still partially off or on and you hit rough air it can go off and on off and on which can also cause uh, flame out or cut off of fuel to not only jet engines but all engines and aircraft and uh, so the way we check it a customer called and he said I have one on the I'm testing now and I'm testing a magnetic field and it isn't on with power I said well where is it turn the power off make sure it's off and he said it's completely off it's not even connected it's laying on the bench so when I'm testing he said I'm still getting a, a reading I said well you shouldn't be because that core in that mag that solenoid valve isn't completely demagnetized so we did a further test on there and he said well what I did I took this one left it on the bench pulled another one out of the box and it didn't test for this magnetic field with it off so I cycled it several times tested and it was completely turning off magnetically I reinstalled it and placed this brand new one that was I tested and it worked so it told me that, that it was partially turned on even when the power was not applied